What is going on guys? Welcome back. In this video today, we're going to learn how to synchronize the file access of multiple different applications using file locks in Python. So let us get right into it. All right, so whenever we have multiple different things accessing the same resource at the same time, we usually need to do some synchronization, especially when writing access is happening. So when the content of the resource is being changed, because we cannot just have multiple threads, multiple processes or multiple different applications access the same resource at the same time without coordination, without synchronization, because this will lead to inconsistencies in the data. This will lead to changes being ignored. Some changes may be being duplicated. It's just a very messy thing and you need to have some coordination. You need to decide who is allowed to do what at a given point in time. And doing this with threats in the same application is quite easy and the same process is quite easy. And I have made a video about this already. I'm going to cover it here briefly uh, again. But today's video is more about file locks. So about accessing the same resource from different applications and how to manage that. And in terms of code, that's actually almost the same. So it doesn't really differ too much. But you will need to have uh, you will need to use a different package for this a different approach for this because of course, different applications don't share the same memory space. So they cannot be coordinated as easily locally. So let us get started with a simple example, I'm going to create a text file here, I'm going to call it counter dot txt and I'm going to just enter a zero in here. So that's going to be a txt file that has the value zero as a string in it. Uh, and what we're going to do here in our Python script is we're going to say import time, import threading. And we're going to just uh, define the following function increase. Now my pie charm is lagging, increase uh, counter, we're going to pass an amount, which is going to be an integer, got to do the proper type hinting here. Uh, and we're going to say for placeholder in range amount. And we're just going to increase this um, with a pause in between. So we're going to if we have an amount 10, we're going to increase it one by one with a pause of one second in between so that we ha uh, we can see how multiple threats work uh, simultaneously concurrently. So we're going to say here with open counter txt in reading mode. Come on in reading mode, SF. What we're going to do is we're going to read the content from that file, we're going to save it as current, we're going to typecast it into an integer. Uh, and then we're going to increase current by one. And we're going to open up the file again counter txt in writing mode sf. And we're going to write current to that file. Uh, and of course, we want to write string current to that file. So not the number, but the string value of that. Uh, and with every iteration, we're going to sleep for one second, just so we can artificially slow this down so that it can happen somewhat simultaneously. Um, and what we're going to do now is we're going to run uh, 15 threats at the same time executing this function accessing this file. So we're going to say here, uh, for placeholder in range 15 for 15 threats. And I'm going to say threading dot threat, the target function is going to be the increase counter function. And we're going to pass the arguments here 10 as a tuple. So we add a comma, I'm going to add a blank line in between here, I'm going to add a blank line here. Uh, and then we're going to run this and you're going to see um, we're going to see nothing because of course, we need to also start these threads. And you can see we have some errors here because uh, things just get messy. And somehow, uh, you know, it is increased, but it's not increased. If you if you let this play through, it's not increased 150 times. Uh, some of the threads fail because they cannot uh, access this file properly. And um, what we can do here now is we can use a lock from threading to synchronize this in this application. So we can say lock equals threading dot lock. And uh, of course, you can also use lock acquire and lock release manually, but it's easier to just say with lock to basically acquire and release in this block here. So every time we want to read and write, uh, re read from the file and write into the file, we acquire a lock afterwards, we release it. Um, and this is done by every threat. And if we do it like that, let me just reset this to zero here. 
if we do it like that, uh, you don't see any output here in the command line, but it does happen here when I click on that, you can see that this actually increases the counter. And I can also remove the sleep here, reset this to zero, restart this, and then it's going to be done uh, instantaneously 150 as you can see. So this is not what we're talking about in this video. This is just the introduction example here. This is how you do it locally with threats. Now let's say different scenario, I have multiple different applications, I'm going to call this now app.py, even though it's not an, uh, a flask application. Um, and what we're going to do now is we're going to have just this one app, it's not going to have multiple processes or multiple threats, it's going to be its own application. Uh, and what this app is going to do is it's just going to say, for placeholder in range 100. It's going to uh, open the file, actually, we can copy this from here, it's going to open the file increase by one and write into the file. So read from the file increase by one, and write into the file back. So that is the counter, let's reset it to zero. Let's run this application, it's done. And you can see now we have 100 here. So this is what this one application does. Now, this application could be 100 different applications to do something similar, right? So I'm going to use this one Python script here, but you can also create five other Python scripts that you can run at the same time. One might increase by one, one might decrease by one, one might uh, divide, one might clear the content, whatever you have multiple different applications that don't know each other, that don't really communicate with each other. And they want to do the same thing here, they want to uh, increase the counter or decrease the counter, they want to access this file and change its content. Now to simulate this, I'm going to use this one script, I'm not going to use multiple scripts, I'm going to use this one script, and I'm going to just run it 10 times uh, simultaneously. How am I going to do that? I'm going to do this with my Linux skills here. I'm going to move to the directory that I'm currently at, which is this one, and I'm going to run a simple bash command. Let me just zoom into it. I'm going to run for I in, I'm going to use here from one to 10. Uh, I'm going to say do Python three app dot py. And done. So you can see we get the same issue here, we get 10 processes started the same application is run 10 times. And some of them already have an error message, some of them are increasing the counter, but you can see it stopped at 199, even though we would expect 1000 if we run this 10 times. This is because they're not synchronized, of course, they're all trying to access uh, this at the same time. That's not good. So what we can do here is we can acquire a file lock, we can use a file an external file as a lock. And for this, you're going to need a Python package called file lock. So pip three install file lock. And this package is going to allow you to import file lock. And then all you have to do is you have to say lock equals file lock dot file lock. And of course, all these applications, even though they're different, and they don't know each other have to use the same file lock. So they have to use the exact same file. Otherwise, it doesn't work. And this file in our case, it's going to be counter dot lock, for example. And then all we do is we say with lock, and then we have our code in here. And of course, you can also do acquire and release manually. So you can say lock dot acquire and lock dot release, if you don't want to use this context manager here, so you can just do it like that. Um, yeah, and if you do it like that, now, it's zero. And if I run the same command here, you can see that all of this was executed, and I have a 1000 here as a value. So all these scripts uh, were running at the same time. And again, if you don't believe me, just uh, create five different scripts, run them at the same time, uh, with different functionality, increasing, decreasing, dividing, multiplying, whatever. Try it out, it works with different different applications, as long as they all refer to the same file lock. And this is how you can synchronize multiple different processes, but also multiple different applications, because for processes for multi processing, you have different locks. Uh, but if you have multiple different applications that are not uh, the same application, they're not coming from the same script, this is a very nice way to synchronize those things.
All right, so that's it for today's video. I hope you enjoyed it and hope you learned something. If so, let me know by hitting the like button and leaving a comment in the comment section down below. And of course, don't forget to subscribe to this channel and hit the notification bell to not miss a single future video for free. Other than that, thank you much for watching. See you in the next video and bye.